Good morning, you guys. What is going on? It's your favorite YouTuber here. Super consistent with the uploads, I know. But we are back again, finally, at the Houston Auto Show. So today we're going to be checking out a whole bunch of new cars that just got uh, released. Some of them, some of them are actually pre-production stuff, like the new Tahoe, the new Trailblazer. They've also got the new Corvette here. Um, so we're here as like a dealership only thing. So we get kind of like some early access. It's going to be pretty cool. So we're walking in right now. We've got a whole bunch of Parkway employees including my boy Vic. Hey guys, what's up? It's Vic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's get started. Alrighty, so welcome to the Houston Auto Show. This is something I do just about every year, but this is the first year that I've been working for a dealership and getting some early access to it. So we're at the front now. We start off with either Ford or Chevy. I think we're gonna go ahead and check out Chevy first, but I do see the all-electric Mustang SUV over there. So we'll go check that out here briefly. So. I know Chevy, for a fact, has a couple new things, one being the new Corvette, the new Tahoe, and their new Trailblazer, which is like a baby version of the Blazer. Uh, I think it starts around like $20,000 or so, so that should be a really popular seller. But the new 3-liter Duramax uh, 1500 High Country, I mean, that truck or that engine's been doing great for us. And then the new 2500, which I think in the right spec, it looks pretty darn good, but some of them look a little questionable. But this one looks pretty, pretty solid. And then here we have an Accelerate Yellow C8 Corvette with the yellow calipers. The yellow, uh, actually, actually is the first time I've seen this color in person and it does look pretty darn good. Looks like this one here is gonna be a 3LT with the yellow stitching on the inside that you can kind of see. Also the yellow seat belts. And then it's a Z51, so it's got the black spoiler, the uh, upgraded brakes and everything. But first time I've seen Accelerate yellow in person on the new vet and actually really, really solid color choice in person. And then of course, right next to the new Corvette, they have the all new Tahoe, the 2021 Tahoe. So we're actually going to start at the back on this one. It has dual exhaust tips, which looks pretty pretty cool on a Tahoe. The uh, the third row legroom is supposed to be a whole lot better than it used to be. And then going on to the inside here, if we can get a shot. Actually, we'll just make our way in here to the, the front first, but the screen's a little bit larger than it used to be. Climate control looks a little bit more similar to the Silverado. The gear shifter, it's actually some buttons, so that's a little different. And then finally, we have the large sunroof like everybody else has. I guess we're, we're finally catching up to them. And then going back here to the second row, these little touch screens on the back headrest are really cool. So uh, I'm sure this is going to be an extremely popular seller. It was about time that they did something a little different with the uh, the Tahoe. So I know it's a little overwhelmed. Maybe we'll come back and check it out later. And then the last new vehicle that Chevy has brought here is going to be the all new Trailblazer, which is like a baby version of the Blazer, which is located right here next to it. Um, so this is going to be kind of like, you know, a Trax or Equinox, um, somewhere in that range. But they start around $20,000. So I think this is actually going to end up being a huge seller for Chevrolet because if you put this next to a Trax, I would say nine times out of 10, someone's going to pick this over a Trax. So um, I'm actually pretty impressed. They have a couple different variants of them. This one is kind of like their, I guess, off-road style. It's kind of cool. You can get the white roof or you can get, I think, a black roof or body colored. I mean, when you think about it, for a $20,000 brand new vehicle, this would make for a real nice little daily for somebody and have a low car payment, that type of thing. So. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to, to start seeing these more. All right, so now we'll go check out our competitor and brothers over at the Ford section. So we'll start this off with the all new GT500 Mustang. Actually, the very first time I've seen one of these in person, um, it's actually one of those cars that looks identical in person as it does on videos, um, which is a good thing. But sometimes you see a car in person, it looks a little bit different. Um, but actually video does it does a pretty good justice of what it actually looks like. But super aggressive front end, giant brake calipers. That is, that is ridiculous. Those are huge. But I think Ford did really well with this car. I mean, 760 horsepower and looks really good. I mean, it, it's a pretty much the perfect Mustang, aside from being a little little on the expensive side, but I mean, really, really solid car. Nice job to Ford, and uh, I can't wait to drive one of these. And then here's the uh, the new Ford Explorer. This is like one of the big things I hear people comparing a bunch of our products to is, well, the new Ford Explorer has this. So let's check this thing out. That is a weird little tablet thing. I don't like that. What the? Okay, that's strange. Well, aside from the iPad on the dashboard, I think everything else is pretty solid on this new Explorer. Let's check out the back seat. The back seat's pretty roomy. Okay. Yeah, um, don't like the iPad, everything else. Nice job. 
And here we are with the all new Mustang SUV. I don't really know what to think about this thing looking at it in person. I think it looks better in person than it does in, on photos, but I don't know, man. This is just, this is kind of weird. My brain's taking a while to, to fully process what's going on here. Um, I don't really know why they use the whole Mustang name. I think if they would have just called this some kind of, you know, Ford electric SUV, it would have done a little bit better in my opinion. Just calling this thing a Mustang is going to be kind of strange and the, the back end, I don't know. It. I, I really don't know what to think about this thing. So taillights are a little interesting. I mean, I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be probably probably pretty fun to drive, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just not, not the right car for me. Here's one of the new Rangers. I actually have never been inside one of the new Rangers, and I plan on doing a comparison video with the all-new Ranger and the Colorado. I think the Colorado's due for a change because these new Rangers are pretty sweet, and uh, for the deals that you can get them, they're uh, they're impressive. So. Overall, I actually really like the Ranger. I think it'd be a really good daily for somebody um, at the price point that they're at. This one here is a Lariat, so that's kind of like a relatively fully loaded. Okay, well, that's kind of expensive. $42,000 sticker price on a Lariat, but that is kind of one of their, their top trims. Um, but some of the entry level ones are like, you know, 30 or so, and it's a, it's a good truck for 30 grand. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and finish off the trifecta of the Chevy Ford and now the Dodge and Ram segment. Um, going through here, I don't think that Ram has really anything new. I think the most recent thing the FCA has done is their Gladiator, um, which we can go take a look at here in a minute. But of course, they've got some, oh, they got a wide body scat pack. We can take a look at that. But I think that Ram, Ram Dodge, FCA, they're still doing great. I still love the Grand Cherokees. My mom has one. She loves hers. And then uh, the wide body scat pack is pretty solid. And then here we are with the all new Jeep Gladiator. I've reviewed a Wrangler, haven't done the Gladiator yet. Um, but the new Gladiator is pretty cool. I like the fact that it's, you know, a mid-size quote-unquote truck and you can take the roof and the doors off and, you know, this would be a fun just little like beach weekend getaway vehicle. I think the looks, you know, kind of looks a little funky, but the actual practicality and, and the fun factor I think is, is really high on these things. So pretty cool. And they actually do have a wide body charger scat pack here as well. The wide body on the charger is definitely very uh, interesting when you're used to seeing the quote-unquote narrow-bodied ones, but the interior is still the same. I'll be excited to, uh, to see their refreshed version of the Charger and Challenger whenever that comes out. should be pretty exciting. And then our last Dodge vehicle will be this wide-body Red Eye, which I actually have uh, pretty steep discounts. I was looking at these the other day, actually, and I couldn't believe that they were discounting them as much as they are. So um, definitely a good buy. I mean, if you're looking for something with you know, over 700 horsepower and want to go just do awesome burnouts, then great choice. Oh my God, is that a Supra? <laughs> so the new Supra I've seen a few times in person now, and uh, I actually like it. I think it'd be a fun little, you know, two-seater sports car. It's definitely a BMW just with a Toyota badge, um, but that's a good thing. I think that Toyota really needed the assistance of BMW to properly, you know, execute a, what they did here. Um, so definitely don't, don't think it's a knock on Toyota. It's just, uh, you know, a little different. So when you're, when you're looking at the front nose of the Supra, it looks a little strange from that view, but I mean, everything else, I actually really like these cars. Um, hopping into the interior now. Uh, it's funny, I actually visited a Toyota dealership and they were like, no, you can't sit in it. No, it, it's, it's not you know, available to sit in. So they were very protective, but apparently not at the auto show. You can, uh, you can do whatever you want. Hey Vic, how you fit, buddy? Not so well. Not so well? Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, if you're in the six foot category, I wouldn't recommend it. And the trunk space, not quite the largest I've ever seen. I think for the money, probably go with the C8 Corvette, but that's just me. Maybe I'm biased. Also, one of my all-time favorite cars. I've never got to drive one of these. I've always wanted to, but the Jaguar F-Type, I think these things, ever since they came out, I think it was the exhaust that really got my attention, but uh, definitely a, a really cool two-seater you know, sports car. Looks a little bit better than the Supra just did, but uh, I absolutely love these things. The only thing I might complain about so I don't like the wheel design. I think that's kind of weird. I think these little like rivet looking things look like they're supposed to be on like a truck wheel rather than a Jaguar F-Type wheel. But everything aside from that, I absolutely love these cars and hopefully we'll be driving one sometime soon. So I would say collectively, there are several auto manufacturers out there that are just doing everything right. And I think one of those brands would definitely have to be Porsche. That's actually the first time I've ever pronounced it the correct way. Usually I just say Porsche. 
but uh, people started getting mad at me when I did that. So um, I just think that everything that they're doing between their new, you know, the four-door Taycan, which is right there, uh, the Panamera, the 911s, the Macan, the Cayenne, I mean, everything that they're doing is, uh, it's just right. And uh, I gotta give them huge props to that because it's tough to, to be an auto manufacturer and make every single car that you that you make a you know pretty much perfect uh, perfect vehicle. So hats off to Porsche. You guys are doing great. And I guess on that list of manufacturers doing everything right, I guess Lamborghini would be right up there next to them. The new Urus looks absolutely sick in person. Love these things ever since they came out. Um, would be kind of your ultimate you know four door SUV, but also you know somewhat of a race car. So <laughs> I think that's awesome. And of course the Huracans that have been out for quite a while. This is probably one of my just favorite cars to just sit there and look at. I think it, the, all the body lines are super clean on this car. Every time you see them, it's like, man, that looks, you know, super exotic, which they are. Um, and then compare that next to some of the McLarens, the new McLaren, I think it's like the GT. I can't remember exactly the, the full name. It could just be the McLaren GT. Um, these look a little different in person. Although it's a McLaren, it doesn't exactly you know, have that, that striking stance that, you know, let's say the 720 does, for example, definitely a little bit more, you know, reserved. Let's go check it out from the back. See, when you see the 720 from the back, you're like, dang, that looks, that looks pretty badass. And maybe it's just the color, they're not doing this car justice, but uh, huh, that looks pretty darn good. I think it just needs a different color. That little kind of beige silver color they have it in isn't, I don't like doing that, that car justice. And then you have Maserati over here, which I don't know. I used to get excited about Maseratis, but now they, I don't know, they just don't really do it for me. But definitely a brand that has, I would say made the biggest leap in terms of just the vehicles that they're they're overall producing in the last few years. I'd say Kia is, is probably one of them. Uh, they just had the new Telluride win their SUV, Motor Trends SUV of the year. And I actually think these are really, really cool. The inside looks to be, you know, really nice. I mean, it, it's just weird seeing a, a Kia badge on some of their cars, like the Stinger GT, which we'll go find here in a second. I mean, that's an awesome four-door little sports sedan, uh, which actually we have one right here. I mean, that looks like a really cool car. And then you look at the badge and you're like, man, that's a, that's a Kia. And it, it's just, I don't know, they've come along. And I guess this makes this my third contender for brand that is doing everything right. And that would be our friends over at Aston Martin. Every new Aston Martin that they have come out with recently just looks super, super cool from the exterior. Um, I mean, that just looks so aggressive. I love the calipers. Shout out to my old Mustang. Um, but man, just the interior of these things. Um, it's not like leaps and bounds ahead of anybody, but it's super nice and refined. It looks really good. Um, but just from the exterior, these cars just look so cool, a little bit, you know, futuristic. And I love the bright color accents that they're starting to do more and more. So yeah, shout out to Aston Martin. That one is a manual, what? All right, place your guesses. How much do you think this one is? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, not bad, a whopping 224 thousand uh, dollars yeah that's a little expensive but <laughs> definitely super super nice cars i haven't driven i don't like any aston martin um but yeah always been a fan of of the way they look this one's pretty sweet wow i like the spoiler full race car oh this actually got everything lit up as well kind of the same same thing the screens on a lot of these cars to me just doesn't doesn't do it for me this is probably one of them but the dash the actual gauge cluster and stuff that's pretty sweet all right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the auto show portion of this video. Sorry, I'm just now getting the camera back out. I'm back here at good old Parkway Chevrolet, which is where I work. Um, and it's getting dark on me because it's like five o'clock and daylight savings time is not fun in the winter. Um, but I did just thought I would go ahead and show off uh, some of the, the vehicles that we have on our inventory. I know we were showing off car show stuff, so just figured I'd go over a couple cool things. So this is what happens when you let RP order a ZL1 for the showroom. It ends up looking uh, exactly like RP's. So this is a 10-speed automatic Garnet Red 2020 ZL1. So uh, yeah, shocking, right? I picked Garnet Red. We just absolutely plowed through our whole Camaro inventory. We've got a whole bunch on the way. Um, but with the whole GM strike thing and everything else, I mean, we we're kind of just down to these four and we sold all the ones we have. So uh, that is kind of unfortunate, but we do have a lot of cool stuff on the way. And then 
when it comes to our Corvette inventory, we're starting to get down on, on Corvettes as well. I think we've got somewhere maybe around like 15 or so of them. So uh, if you guys are in the market, we still have Grand Sports, Stingrays. Um, I think we have two Z06s. I think we have one in the showroom and then one's like on the way from a different dealership or something like that. Uh, but if you are in the market for a C7 and you want to pick up one of the last times you'll ever be able to get a front-engined, rear-wheel drive, manual um, Corvette, then uh, come see your boy. And uh, I'm just, it's bittersweet seeing the C7 platform go away because, you know, we've been seeing these cars since 2014 and they've been awesome and they're, they're fun to drive, they're cool to look at. Even, you know, being 2020 now, they still look like modern with the times. The only thing I might say is a little bit starting to get on the dated side might be a little bit of some interior pieces here and there. But other than that, like when you look at the car from the front, from the back, it still looks like something you can sell in 2020 and it still looks, you know, with the times. But yeah, like I said, we've probably got about 15 more Corvettes. And then after these are all gone, we will be completely out of front engine vets. And then the mid engine vets should start rolling in. We're expecting our first one sometime probably late March. And then, uh, you know, we have a long list of, of customer orders that we've got to fulfill and that type of thing. So that's definitely going to be an exciting time, too. We're still taking orders for, for the new Corvette. So if you are interested in placing an order for the new Corvette, you can come see me. I can take care of you. Well, just kidding. I actually did forget about uh, one, bla one more Blazer and one more Camaro and two more Corvettes in here. So we've got a Premier Blazer in here. We've got another ZL1. This one being satin steel with a six-speed manual transmission. So this is definitely a pretty sweet car here. And then this is also another car that your boy RP spec'd out. So we went for the uh, the race car pawpaw spec. So we got a nice Lake Elkhart blue with the black wheels, black calipers, Grand Sport. And then we went with the Kalahari interior with the competition suede seats. And I think that those are just super, super cool. So probably one of my favorite favorite Corvettes that I've seen here uh, on the lot since I started working. And then lastly, uh, one of our last Z06 Corvettes. One of the final times you'll ever see a uh, C7 Z06 on our showroom. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I sincerely apologize for the super long gap between videos. That was, uh, that was not cool of me, my bad. But I promise I've got new videos coming on the way. The C8 uh, hopefully will be here somewhat soon. Uh, wifey and I are, are getting into a house or building a house so that's a whole process in itself uh, and that's been where a lot of my time and focus has been going because it's kind of a kind of a big deal along with that and then working here at Parkway so if you guys are in need of a newer used car hit me up at Parkway Chevrolet and until then guys hope you guys have a great one take it easy